Now, we are saying that the pricing and valuation of fixed income contract is similar or very identical, identical to forward equity contracts, forward equity contracts. So in that, we must take into consideration the underlying cash flows, underlying cash flows. Now, in equity forward contract, the underlying cash flows were dividends, isn't it? Now, in fixed income instrument, our underlying cash flows will be now the coupons. Coupon, which is uh, related to the interest. Because we know a fixed income instrument is one in which an issuer who is a borrower promises uh, to pay back the par value to the investor or the board holder and in between the debt to maturity he is paying coupon uh, or, or net that is a coupon paying bond the other type of bond was a non coupon or a zero uh, pay coupon bond which we uh, had uh, discussed later and which also fell under the discussions in fixed income investment analysis. Now, uh, there are certain variables that we need to consider in the valuation of fixed income uh, investment. So our variables of interest will be, number one, the ST. The ST, this is the value of the fixed income investment after passage of a time T, value of fixed income instrument after passage of time t. Then the another one we need to consider will be now our DI. Our DI will be coupon. These are the coupon paid at time ti so there are various uh, uh, frequencies in which we pay the coupon it can be semi annual it can be annual or it can be quarterly then we will abbreviate as a bond paying uh, a coupon paying board as b subscript c this is a coupon paying this will represent a coupon paying bond. Then uh, we also have to be interested with capital T. This is the expiration of the forward contract. Expiration of the forward contract. Then we will also be interested uh, with T, of course, the fifth one is T. This is any time, any arbitrary time, arbitrary time after the initiation, after the initiation of the forward contract, initiation of the forward contract. Then the other one of interest will be Y. We will introduce a variable Y. This will be the remaining maturity, remaining time to maturity, remaining time to maturity, remaining time to maturity to the fixed to the forward contract to the forward contract to the forward contract expiration. Then if we are going maybe to have another variable seven here, T plus Y. Now T plus Y will be time to maturity of the bond. 
at initiation of the forward contract. This will be the time to maturity, maturity of the bond of the bond, maturity of the bond at initiation, at initiation of the forward contract, the forward contract. Now, it is for us maybe to say there is a variable 8 which we need to be careful of. If we combine our coupon paying bond and maybe with T plus Y, a factor like that, this now will indicate the bond price at time uh, T bond price at time t this will be an indication of the bonds price at time t now having seen the various variables of interest in the pricing and valuation of fixed in income instrument we should keep in mind and remember that remember Remember that we said that as we did with uh, equity, coupons are cash flows, isn't it? So uh, the cash flows on the board, cash flows on the bond represent interest, represent interest that is, is paid as coupons so therefore uh, we will have the coupon interest we will have our coupon interest and this one we will abbreviate as CI so what we did with equity uh, income instrument from the value given at the start of the contract we were able to less it from uh, the price uh, of the bond at initiation. So this is what we were saying. The future price of the bond will be given by now the bond, the coupon paying bond at initiation of the contract, then T plus Y. And we said this term is the bond price at initiation. Initiation at the start is a time period zero. Minus now the present value of the coupon interest, minus the present value of the coupon interest. Now, all this, all that, multiplied by 1 plus the risk free rate, we will have raised to power t. t is the time to uh, expiration of the bond. So, arbitrary time, we can be able to value, value the bond at time t. Now, our value of the bond at time t will be given by, now, the bond price, the coupon paying bond price at time t, and this is abbreviated as a complete term like that, minus the present value of the coupon interest minus now this future price because we must be able to discount it. Future price one plus the risk free rate raised to power the differential t minus t. So this is what we are saying, yeah? That at initiation of the contract time p now, so we need to compound we need to compound this value of the price here so that you can be able to obtain a future price. But to compound that, this term here, we are compounding at the risk-free rate. We are compounding at the risk-free rate. We need to be conscious that within coupon paying times here, maybe time i, then this could be time 2. Yeah, This could be time, time 1 times 2 
or even there could be another coupon there time three. So we need to factor in and less it this term here then to be able to get our future price. Now at any price, at any time during uh, the life of the contract, maybe at a particular time of interest here, passage of time here, we need only to take, let us assume also, let us assume also that uh, maybe uh, what uh, T1 has been paid and we're in between this time period here, T. And uh, we find that uh, now T1 here has been paid. So we need to be careful of the other cash flows that are remaining. That is T3 there. So and exclude those cash flows that have been uh, passed by time, right? And again, because we promised a future price here, yeah, this now at this remaining period, which intervening period is T capital T minus more T there, then we need to discount this promised future price there at time T. This is what we are doing by discounting and lessing any uh, present value of the coupon in the intervening period T minus T. That uh, will form the valuation of a bond at any particular uh, time T.